Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. Today we are looking at some really cool archival footage of the EM-2 uh, during British testing. So this is some footage that Jonathan Ferguson figured might be out there um, and was looking for as part of the research for his book Thornycroft SA-80, uh, History of British Bullpup Rifles, and uh, it was actually Royal Armouries archivist Philip Abbott who found this in the archives and provided us a copy, which is really cool. So let's dig in and take a look at a variety of different tests that they have on camera. Now first up, we have just kind of a side view of the action, and this rifle is just barely cycling. So if you watch, you'll see the extractor goes just about to the back end of the ejection port. Now these rounds are all coming out okay, uh, but we'll get to one that doesn't. I do also want to point out, if you look at the very top of the bolt, you can see the locking wedge and firing pin actually going forward right there, immediately before the gun fires. Now here's the round that doesn't quite come far enough back, it doesn't make it out of the extractor claw, and the empty case gets rechambered. That's a classic sort of malfunction. Now here we have a gun that they have made some modifications to, and we can see there that the bolt is now traveling much farther back, so I suspect they've opened up the gas port or done something similar. Unfortunately we don't have the exact details on which number gun each of these is, or exactly what they were, what changes they were testing. But you can see the bolt's going significantly farther back now, and uh, the cases are clearing much more positively. You can still see the firing pin closing on the top of the bolt there with each shot, which is kind of a, a that's a neat little detail. Right there, it goes forward and then the gun fires. The magazine's a little too deep in this to be able to see the rounds chambering up. Uh, here we have a basically a same sort of test, except they've filmed it from a top angle looking down on the gun, so you can see where the ejection goes. Um, kind of cool, this is high speed photography from like 1951 or 1952, which is on its own uh, rather neat. So in this angle you can actually see the cartridges being pushed up out of the magazine, uh, alternating left and right. I think we can see, you can see the right hand one but not the left. At any rate, not a whole lot else going on in this one. Uh, the gun is once again cycling reasonably well, well cycling perfectly well, and it's kicking cases forward which would be nice if you have to try and shoulder this thing uh, on your left shoulder and you know you can hold your chin back and not take a case to the face. Now this one is, an, this is an interesting example of a gun modified specifically for a high speed test. This lug that you see in the, the bottom right, that is the locking flap uh, on the right side of the bolt, now gone, here it comes back, and they have cut a hole out. They've made this a cutaway part, they've also cut away uh, the very front of the ejection port so that you can see the firing pin uh, inside the bolt. So this is the sort of thing that you do with high speed footage when you're testing a firearm. Uh, you want to see exactly what the internal parts are doing, um, and usually you'll do this as you know investigating a specific function of a specific part. So it's coming up here in just a moment, we will see, there it is, the firing pin goes forward and then the action opens. And in order to give you that view, they had to go through and actually cut away parts of the mechanical functioning of the gun. One other thing I'll point out here, that sort of weird feature you see at the bottom in the middle of the screen, that is actually the front end of the ejection port cover. So. Uh, that kind of also gives you a hint that they've cut away a little bit of the front of the ejection port here uh, so that you can actually get a view inside it with the high-speed camera. So, uh, this is from you know high-speed photography that was very limited in terms of frame rate and, and field of view, and so you get very specific bits of footage. Now here's a really cool one. This is a high-speed drop test of the EM-2, and you can see it kind of wobbling around. Note that the barrel bounces around inside the handguard because the handguard does not clamp down tight to the muzzle end of the barrel, so we'll let them drop it one more time. This looks like the gun's made out of rubber, but this is actually fairly typical for what you would see if you looked at a real drop test on high-speed video. We don't get to see the, the scope impacting there. Uh, we do also, however, have a swing test, and I believe these both of these fell into the category of what they called rough, uh, rough usage. So in this case they want to see if they're going to damage the gas tube by clanking it into a big chunk of wood or concrete or something there. Now this is an interesting series of clips. These guys are test firing rifle grenades and the recoil is substantial. Note that the bolt actually locked open there despite there being no magazine, and it'll do it again with this guy. 
Uh, there is no gas port setting on the EM2 to turn the gas system off. And so you get a lot of force coming back on the bolt carrier there. Um, th this particular testing, they clearly were having some issues. Uh, and of course, rifle grenades have a ton of recoil. Now, here's what the gun actually looks like in firing. And this is an extremely cool piece of footage because the gentleman that we are watching here is Stefan Jansen. He is the man who is actually primarily responsible for designing and producing the EM2. And this is him actually uh, doing some rapid fire magazine dumps uh, with the rifle of his own creation. So I'm gonna go ahead and replay that clip just cause it's really cool. So this is the same clip again. Uh, one other thing to note here, look, if, if you watch, he actually uses his firing hand to change magazines. Part of that might be because he's resting the gun on uh, his sandbags there, but this was at the time considered to be the fastest reload mechanism a reload procedure. Note also that the bolt automatically closes when he inserts a new magazine. So, uh, that's, that's probably the, to me, that's the coolest clip of the whole thing. So a big thanks to Jonathan for uh, looking for this footage and to Philip Abbott for finding it. If you're interested, check out Thornycroft SA80, which is currently available for pre-sale on Kickstarter. Thanks for watching.